It's the year 2035, and artificial general intelligence has already taken over the world. All jobs are now done by AI, so humans are left without any income and must now beg for scraps of food. Our relationships have all been replaced by AI sex bots. Every step you take, every purchase you make, every word you speak is observed by our new digital gods. There is no hope for the future, there is only the machine. Or at least that's what you might be worrying about when you hear the term AI. Over the last two or three years, to many people it probably seems like AI has been on an exponential progress curve. OpenAI just recently released a diffusion model that can make convincing videos, when this is what was the state of the art just a few days before. Tools like ChatGPT and Stable Diffusion have become so mainstream that some experts are predicting that AI generated content will straight up outnumber human generated content within the next few years. And we're about to cross this point where more content that we see that are gonna, that's gone on the internet will be generated by AIs than by humans. It's really worth pausing to like let that sink in. In the next four to five years, the majority of cultural content, like the things we see, will be generated by AI. And the fear around this technology clearly hasn't been trivial either. I think, I think AI is, is one of the biggest threats. Um, Commonly likely, however, that the spectrum of intelligence extends much further than we currently conceive. And if we build machines that are more intelligent than we are, they will very likely explore this spectrum in ways that we can't imagine and exceed us in ways that we can't imagine. AI is coming for management jobs. It has the potential of a civilizational destruction. You know, a good, an interesting scenario would be, uh, you know, climate change destroys our infrastructure, so AI disappears. Believe it or not, that's an more, a more favorable response uh, or a more favorable outcome than actually continuing to get to an existential uh, threat. I want to talk about this sense of doom that seems to be permeating our culture at the moment and what we can do about it. But before that, let me ask you a question. What exactly is AI? Well, the term itself is self-explanatory, artificial intelligence. Minds that we create as opposed to minds that nature creates. But this general term doesn't actually explain what ChatGPT or Stable Diffusion or any of the countless open source models actually are and what they do. I want to make it clear that what I'm saying may be outdated within a few years or even a couple of months from this video being posted. Uh, but as of right now, in the first half of 2024, artificial intelligence generally refers to one type of model, a transformer. So what is a transformer? A transformer is essentially a token prediction algorithm. What is a token? Anything you want it to be as long as it's part of an ordered sequence, a word, a subword. An image in a sequence of images, a snippet of a waveform in an audio file. All of these things can be and are used as tokens. How does a transformer predict tokens? Well, it takes a fixed number of previous tokens as input and calculates what the most likely next token is. In a modern transformer architecture like ChatGPT, this calculation is done by a neural network, which is represented in memory via matrix multiplications, and then spits out one number at the end, representing the most likely next token. For the purposes of this video, the actual technical details of this aren't important. But if you really want to get a better understanding, I suggest you watch Andre Kapathy's two-hour video on Transformers. I'll link it in the description. It requires a bit of Python knowledge, but it's by far the most concise and well-explained resource on the topic. What matters for this video is that what we think of as AI in the year of our Lord 2024 is essentially a relatively simple algorithm that predicts the next thing in a sequence of things. So why is it so powerful? That's the part that some people are worried about. We have no idea what actually makes these models so powerful. But before you come to the wrong conclusion, let me explain what I actually mean by this. This idea seems to give people the impression that the engineers and researchers who built these models don't know how they work or that nobody understands what's going on inside of them. That is not the case at all. In reality, what experts are talking about when they say we don't know how they work is that they have emergent properties. In other words, we know how they work and we know exactly how they're built. The theory for this stuff has been around since at least the 1990s, with some concepts going all the way back to the 60s. 
What we don't know is why these models produce the results that they do. How in the actual hell does doing a bunch of matrix multiplications on your graphics card result in a computer program that can write an essay, create a poem, do your math homework, look up stuff on the internet for you, even give you instructions on how to commit genocide? That is a question that nobody, at least as of now, knows the answer to. And the weirdest part about it is that transformers are highly scalable, meaning the bigger the brain you give a transformer, the better it does. That's the main reason why companies like OpenAI can just throw huge amounts of compute and data at a transformer and get seemingly magical results. So now we come back to the topic at hand. What can we do about the fact that there seems to be this insane new technology that everyone's hyping up to be the bringer of doom, the destroyer of jobs and livelihoods, the replacer of relationships, and even the creator of better versions of itself? Well, let's take a step back and look at the facts for a moment. ChatGPT and models like it are not going to replace most people's jobs. Many people have called this the hallucination problem. Uh, this is where these models basically just make shit up when they don't know something. And this is a lot more common than people realize. Basically, in any job where any sort of precision is needed, human input or at the very least human oversight is still extremely crucial. Yes, models like ChatGPT have become much better over the last year and many of the early problems have been worked out. ChatGPT especially, which I assume has been trained on feedback from millions of people over the past year, is actually pretty damn accurate now. But don't let me remind you of the things that it might give you if it's given a complex task. Ironically, the first jobs that are likely to be replaced are going to be the intellectual and the creative ones, rather than bombing or physical labor jobs, the opposite of what happened during the Industrial Revolution. But even in these professions, there's no need to panic just yet. If we take the example of artists, the road to artists being completely replaced by computers is not a short or even a clear one. Yes, tools like DALI and Stable Diffusion are very impressive, no doubt. And sometimes they do, in fact, output things that are truly creative and compelling. But these tools have a similar limitation to ChatGPT. In what way? Well, they're essentially fancy denoisers. What do I mean by denoiser? Basically, a model like Stable Diffusion will take a randomly generated noise image, think TV static, and then over a certain number of steps, it'll predict a slightly less noisy image until it produces something that looks like what you described in your text prompts. Dali has no idea what's actually being produced, nor what an anime waifu even is. It is literally just taking some static and trying to optimize it until it vaguely has something to do with the text prompts. As a result, in many cases it'll just hallucinate some random patterns of pixels that result in strange or even terrifying images. Not to mention, AI generated images are usually limited to a certain look. And although there are many different models and tools that you can use to create images with different styles, AI generated images and videos are, at least as of now, pretty easy to spot if you know what you're looking for. Now for industries that are more grounded or precision oriented, like for example engineering, or even blue collar work like plumbing or construction, these are probably going to be the last jobs that will be replaced. Not only because of safety considerations and things like that, beyond very limited scope tasks, transformers are likely to just start hallucinating or really uh, making stuff up. Now obviously that's completely unacceptable in a profession like engineering where potentially thousands of lives are dependent on precision and continuity. This isn't even to mention that simple tasks in the real world are so out of scope for transformers that we wouldn't even know where to start to get them to do them. For example, take the job of a janitor who takes cleaning supplies and cleans a small building. Simple job, but think about what you would actually need for this to work. First, we need cleaning supplies, but what kind? That changes depending on what you're cleaning. If your client expects you to clean carpets and windows, you might need a vacuum cleaner and some window cleaner. But what if their building has tiled floors? Then you need a mop. And don't forget about the bathrooms, so you need a plunger, bleach, cloths for wiping and all sorts of other stuff. Well, let's just say you have your cleaning supplies. Now what? Well, you have to figure out how to clean a particular surface and then use your motor skills to pick up your mop, your bucket, etc etc and now you're in a position where you need a human like robot with highly capable motor skills and a controlling AI that can adapt to any situation. 
Basically what we need is a model of the world or a model that can understand and simulate something like the real world. This is what OpenAI were referring to in their announcement of the Sora model where they mentioned the idea of world simulators. To illustrate why this is important, think about how humans learn. We learn by interacting with the world around us, the other people in it, the objects and the concepts. Now imagine trying to learn something about the world without actually living in it. What is a car if you've never seen one, driven one or sat in one? What is a person if you've never talked to one or had a relationship with one? What is language if you've never used it to communicate your thoughts, etc, etc? Without the natural world, the learning process would be extremely difficult to say the least. This is basically where the state of AI training is currently at. We have neural networks that, as far as we know, might be able to learn anything, but they're fundamentally limited by the modalities in which they learn. In other words, how can a brain learn without eyes or ears or hands or anything that allows us to interact with and experience the world? ChatGPT and models like it are trained entirely on text. A model like Sora is trained on text and video. Obviously, these are extremely limited ways of viewing our world, and although multimodal models are a thing, there does seem to be something that's missing from this equation. So how might researchers simulate a world for these unfortunate digital brains? In my opinion there's a couple of ways this can go. In the first scenario, think of a virtual reality in which nearly every aspect of our world is simulated. Something like what's depicted in say, Sword Art Online. In this kind of uh, full dive VR scenario, you could interact with the world around you in a way that's just as convincing as in the real world maybe with some things changed around. Take an AI and place it in this virtual world, complete with a human body. The benefits to training an AI model in such a world would be huge, because you could control all the variables and fine tune them in any way that you see fit. Of course, the problem with this way of doing it is scale and hardware. It already takes tens of millions of dollars in GPUs, not to mention millions more in researcher and engineer salaries to train a large language model or a diffusion model from scratch, just using text files or images. If we added on top of that, the requirement of a convincing virtual world, it's not hard to imagine the costs very easily running into the billions. And of course, we don't have any technological or academic basis for any of this, by the way. Probably not in the next few months, at least. Another way we could do it is by giving our model a physical body in the real world, or at least an interface through which it can experience the world. To do this would require, again, more hardware and research and engineering than what we currently have, but it wouldn't be as much of a stretch as using a fully realized virtual world. There are already examples of using language models inside physical bodies. Although those are mostly just empty shells with a language model tacked onto like a crude text-to-speech module so that you can quote-unquote talk to it. Very uncanny valley at the moment. Also understand speech and remember. I hope to do things such as go to school, study, make art, start a business. But then you have the problem of training speed. It's all well and good to be reading trillions of words from the internet when you're a disembodied brain across thousands of GPUs that can each do tens of billions of operations per second. But to do something like that with a physical body would obviously be impossible. And even if this AI was somehow just as capable as the human brain, it might take years or decades to actually return any meaningful results, just like how humans have to take years to learn stuff. So we have a problem that hasn't been solved and seemingly puts us in a catch-22 situation, where the more feasible it becomes in one way, the less feasible it becomes in another. And that is basically why the state of the art in AI is actually kind of stuck right now. With the same model that Google proposed all the way back in 2017, the Transformer. Yes, ChatGPT and Sora and all of that are very impressive, but they are all more or less the same thing. An upscaled, highly trained Transformer. So what's the point? Should you be worried? Should you not be? I think the answer is that you shouldn't let it worry you too much yet. There's not much risk to your job or your relationships being replaced by a robot or a computer just yet, as of early 2024. But if news comes out from OpenAI or Stanford or Google or some random company or research lab somewhere that they've solved the understanding of the world problem, that might be time to start being worried. When that happens, I'll see you in the new digital utopia.